We were at Italy, turn 4.6 in Operation Live and Let Die. So uh, the Italians don't have a lot to do uh, this turn. We're uh, still being extremely peaceful as the Italians. So we have to uh, do our tech roll. We have the single major factory in northern Italy. So we're going to go ahead and have one tech roll. Italy's currently at stage one for wartime economy, so that's what we're going to go for here um, for our one tech roll. So we need a seven or a higher to advance to stage two, and we get a six, so we did not um, succeed there. So no tech increase for uh, the Italians. They are not lend leasing uh, to Spain, so no lend lease uh, for the Italians. As far as purchases, they had four, they have $14 this turn. Um, the 10 they normally get each turn, and then they had four bucks they saved from last turn. So with that $14, they're going to go ahead and spend six of it. So that will leave them uh, $8 left over to hold on to. So they'll carry $8 over to uh, turn number five, and with... The $6, they're moving their major factory up one stage on the production chart from three to two. So then that is just <clears throat> one uh, $6 payment away from being uh, placed on the board. Um, as far as um, movements, we're not even going to move any units. Everything's going to stay where it is. We've got a small contingent down in Abyssinia. Um, Cyrenaica has got a couple of units, um, the Italian fleet there in C zone 50, which consists of, um, a battleship, a heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, three destroyers, two subs, a torpedo boat destroyer, and three, uh, coastal subs. And then we still have a tactical and a fighter based on, at the air base in Sardinia, and then just some mountain infantry, militia and infantry scattered throughout uh, Italy itself. So no uh, movements, uh, non-combat from the Italians. So that will finish up Italy's turn. They collect their $10 again. So that will give them a total of $18 to spend on um, turn number five. So that covers um, the Italians. Um, I'll be turning things over to um, Fighting Irish for the U.S. and KMT. Um, maybe a good time to just look at where things are at for the axis here since the axis are done here on turn number four. So as far as Germany goes, um, some things are typical for Germany. They're at $24, so um, that's pretty much typical at this stage of the game. They had their three... Um, territories that they were able to annex. Um, they have built some units in both the east uh, and the west, so building up some forces there. Hopefully peace will reign. We are um, in engaged in um, diplomatic efforts right now to maintain the peace, but you always got to be prepared for war, so um, Germany's building up some decent forces both in the east and the west. Um, Italy uh, got a little bit of a late start because of how much they had sent to um, the nationalists in Spain the first couple of turns, but we're just about to finish off a second major factory, which is usually where I like to be at. I don't think I've had any games where Italy had more than two major factories, so that should be sufficient for Italy, hopefully. Um, and obviously they took Abyssinia uh, fairly easily, so um, Italy's not in uh, too bad a shape. Um, and then in Spain, it looks like we are going to have a confrontation on turn number five, which might possibly end the uh, Spanish Civil War in the Axis's favor. The Republicans are down to a single territory. I think they have five, maybe six infantry. Um, a cavalry, a tactical, and a fighter. And uh, if Franco decides to try to finish off the Republicans uh, here on turn number five coming up, they will be able to bring 
um, from two adjacent territories. They will be able to bring six infantry, three artillery, a cavalry, and four uh, fighters. So hopefully that's enough to uh, finish off the Republicans. So, and obviously that is good news for both uh, the Germans and the Italians if they can go ahead and um, assist Franco with winning the uh, Spanish Civil War. And in the Pacific, the Japanese have gone ahead and uh, they've built up a nice stack of Marines in Kyushu. There's eight Marines. So um, that gives them flexibility to be able to move around again. Um, hopefully diplomacy um, will carry the day and the Japanese won't have to um, be aggressive and go to war, but you never know. So, And we have the five transports there. So that can carry the eight Marines to a piece, and then the motorized infantry and the regular infantry can go on the other one. So we've got 10 ground units we can move around the board on those five transports. Uh, we've also built up one single fleet. I usually like to have a couple of uh, fleets going for the Japanese um, to go in a couple of different directions, depending on how things play out. But based on the uh, moves of my opponents, I felt it was better to combine everything into one fleet. So this fleet here in C-Zone 89 off of Formosa is pretty uh, formidable. Um, several capital ships, carriers with a bunch of planes. So that is the entire Imperial Navy minus the uh, transports. So um, Japan's got quite a bit of striking power in this fleet, should it uh, come to that. And then on the uh, Asian mainland, um, no combat with the Chinese, but they have built up a decent force in Rihi. Uh, cavalry, a motorized infantry, a fighter, and about six or seven infantry in that stack. So um, not a lot of offensive punch, but at least um, a pretty good defensive um, power they have there to dissuade um, maybe the CCP and the KMT from getting um, too aggressive, at least against the Japanese themselves. So um, that's how things look now. Overall, without revealing too much of, again, the plans, um, I think I'm pretty much where I wanted to be at with all three of the Axis powers. Um, uh, you know, Germany did its typical three annexations. The Italians took Abyssinia. It looks like, knock on wood, um, the Spanish Civil War is going to go the Axis' way. So through five turns coming up here, um, those are all positive developments. The tech has been pretty good, especially for Germany. They're um, already at stage two on five techs. So um, the Italians and the Japanese lag in behind, but that's typical since they have far fewer uh, factories. Um, I've definitely been interested with some of my opponent's moves. Um, a couple things have uh, caught me off guard a little bit. Again, I'm, I'm concerned with what's happening in China. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how that's going to play out. And it could be that my uh, strategy, um, at the end of the game, when we look back on it, wasn't the uh, correct course, but again, I'm just trying to, um, stick with, um, you know, my pre-war plan, but uh, we'll see how that plays out. Um, other than that, um, I think things are, um, going pretty much according to plan. Um, these couple of British fleets, the one here in 83, especially, um, and then the one up in 24, a little concerning, mostly this one down here in 83. And then Global War 36 enthusiast has definitely built up um, a nice force in Arel Kursk there. A um, couple of light armor, about five uh, motorized and about 10 infantry. So he's kind of um, grouped everything into a couple of territories in Russia, which is something I typically do as well. So he's not really spread out in Western Russia, a couple of territories worth of um, most of his units. So 
We'll see how things play out going into turn number five. Again, turning things over to Fighting Irish for the U.S. and KMT, and then we'll see you back here on 5.1 um, for the Germans. Take care.